welcome to Archway Gallery. Happy you're here with us this evening. Kevin, come on up here. <laughs> uh, I am going to give a couple of um, announcements for Kevin tells us about this beautiful show. Just wanted to let you know um, a few things. If you weren't familiar with the exhibit in our central gallery, that's the Scholastic Art exhibit, and it's going to be up just for another few days. Um, what it is is award-winning junior high and high school art. These artists are all um, award winners. I was just looking to see if somebody. <laughs> anyway, they're all award winners, and they were um, given additional awards, and some of those are actually going on to finals in New York. So, these are really very talented young people in our in our area. So. I uh, just wanted you to know a little bit about that. Wanted to also let you know, those of you who are interested in the drawing sessions, we have two more coming up uh, on the 6th and on the 20th. And also, in um, addition to the drawing sessions, we are doing a, uh, a, uh, a, a an art sale of the artists' work who participate in these drawing sessions. Um, and Kevin may be able to give you a little more information um, if you have questions about it. But that sale is going to be March. Let me see which one is it. March 11th is the preview night, and March 12th all day is the sale. So come by and see some of this, this beautiful figurative work. Kevin is one of the artists. There, yeah, and there's, uh, there's uh, more postcards over there on the desk. It's going to be really interesting to see the work. Um, also, in addition, on March 13th, we'll be having a Rice University music recital here. Um, this should be a really wonderful event, so go on to our website for a little more information on that. That will be in the evening. On March 19th and 20th, in conjunction with Archway Gallery's 40th celebration, for, oh, excuse me, the 40th anniversary, and there are the postcards there. We are doing um, an art car for the art car parade. We will be working on our art vehicle at this event. This is the Hope Wheels event. It is March 19th and 20th. You can come on out, enjoy the festival, come by, see what the artists of Archway are doing, how we are designing this, this uh, art truck. Should be a lot of fun. There will also be art activities for the children. And then, um, well, in addition, just we're going to be doing um, a big celebration April 16th, but there will be more information about that at next month's event. So anyway, now for the main event tonight, Kevin, this is Kevin's first solo show with Archway Gallery. And I think he has created a dynamic body of work. So, striking and bold and powerful. And uh, I look forward to hearing a little bit uh, more about what Kevin, what his inspiration is for this show. Thank you all, all for coming out tonight. Uh, what a show. This is, uh, I'm really happy. I'm uh, marking, I told you I was going to I'm really happy uh, to have this show. Um, plans. Let's talk about plans for a second. Um, did I plan to have these huge canvases when I got this show? No. No, I didn't. These, uh, these came to me during the process, and I've been working on these for the last several months. And to see them now in the gallery, to see them up on the walls, not in my studio, not covered in paint and rags and brushes and dust and whatever, 
But to actually see them on the walls is just an amazing thing for me. So I, again, I have to thank everyone for coming. And I, I just let y'all know that I really am happy that I'm a very happy person. Constructing the Dance is the name of this show. So a little feedback on that. Where did that come from? What am I talking about? As an artist, I use a lot of figurative figures in my work, my work is figurative. And I came to a realization about a year ago that in my use of figures, I don't use the face a lot in my work. I don't, I don't put eyes and nose and mouth so much in the front of my work. I, I tend to work on the body, I tend to use the arms and the legs more. And as, a, as humans, we're all sort of trained, wired, how it is to, to talk to each other's faces. I'm talking to all of your faces right now. And read emotion, read the story of what's going on through that narrow lens. And what I do with my art is I try to kind of broaden that lens, broaden that scope. The, dance aspect of this is that as a, I'm not a choreographer, but I feel like uh, as a choreographer, your job would be to take humans, to take people and put them, teach them, train them, whatever, to perform a dance, to emote, to give an idea, to teach, to do something. And that's what I do in my paintings. My figures aren't moving in the aspect of like a dance, but I am placing them in movement. I, I try to always have people in movement in my pieces because I'm trying to portray a story. I'm trying to give an idea, a concept, a feeling. And so that's where the whole constructing the dance came from. Uh, the headless pieces. I've had a lot of people ask me about the headless pieces. And that, that really pertains to the whole concept of the face, losing the face. I don't, as an artist, I don't want to necessarily tell you what you have to think. You know, I'm not that kind of a totalitarian artist. I want to engage with you. I want you to look at my work, and I want to hold a conversation with you. And I feel like the body without the head is going to bring you in. You're going to look at it, and I'm hoping that you're going to relate to it differently than you would to the faced bodies. I'm telling you a story, I'm telling you ideas, I'm giving you feedback, but you're going to have to read it through that emotive part of your mind that connects to the body. And so hopefully that gives you a little bit broader of a story, a little bit more to think about, more of your own direction. And hope Everything here will inspire people in some way, shape, or form from the stories that they gather from the work and not because I've told them to be inspired or uh, told them what to think, but because when they see this work and they start to think about it and they start to understand it, that it awakens something inside them that they needed to think about. So, um, well, that's basically it. <laughs> Again, uh, just, I hope that this inspires people, and I hope that everyone who comes tonight and comes over the next month while the show is up can walk out and feel somehow changed, somehow better for it. Thank you. Any questions? Well, uh, in our conversations at Mother Dog Studios, mm -hmm. You revealed a lot to me, and and I think that's something that a lot of folks don't know is uh, about how you constructed these figures in terms of your previous research with uh, drawing sessions and how you layer the figures, and I think that's very important that people know uh, how. Uh, you arrived at these almost cubistic uh, layered constructions, which 
you address that? I'd be happy to, John. Yeah, the, for those who are familiar with my earlier works, this sort of, edge, I like to keep this, I'll, I'll go with that. Uh, this, this is a slight of a, a departure, it's, it's, a new, it's new work. Um, one of the things that I do regularly is I attend the life drawing sessions that we have here at Life Drawing. And, you know, I've done this, I've, I've, I've run life drawing sessions, I've attended life drawing sessions. I, I love doing that, it's, it's just fun to do. What ends up happening though, sometimes is that the models, <clears throat> some of the models especially, are really good at doing sort of moving poses, okay? And so they'll sit there and they'll hold a pose, but instead of holding that for 30 minutes or how long we to make them hold that for a pose, they'll sit there and they'll shift constantly as they're posing. And so as an artist, you know, you could sit there and just quickly make gesture drawings. That's what most people do. But what I try to do is I, I try to capture as much completeness as I can from each pose. And so every time the model moves and I look up and it's in a different position, I try to capture as much completeness out of that pose as possible. And that started this whole figurative work in this vein. Um, I'm really trying to show not just movement, because that's, of course, one thing that I want people to see in these, but also sort of a... a a timeline, possible changes, things that may happen, may not happen. You know, not the, not necessarily the evolution or, or movement of just the human body, but the evolution or change in the human thought. As a person makes a decision, then they go from one position in the decision to another position in the decision to another position in the decision. So what I've got in my toolbox is I have a sketchbook. And in that sketchbook, I make lots of drawings. And I come in here and I draw the model. I draw them in lots of positions and all that stuff. And I take them back to my studio. And I take these giant canvases and I pour paint all over them to get the process started. And I let the drips kind of form as they will and kind of direct me in some kind of way on where to begin and what to do. And then I pull from my sketchbook these images that I've already encountered and built and place them onto that shifting surface of the drips and just build up layer upon layer as the thought changes in my mind. It's like, add another figure, I'm thinking a different thought at a different point in the story. And then I put on another figure, and then I put on another figure. So that's sort of how this, uh, <laughs> how this whole thing started. When you're working on, and this is kind of ties in, when you're working on something that big, logistically, how do you do it? Like, you start at the bottom and do all the legs first, and then work your way to the You do the whole thing. And if you have a lift or a ladder. Or I have a rickety stool. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of faith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, I'm not, I am being facetious a little bit, but no, that's actually true. When, when I'm working on something this scale, you know, it's, it's really daunting. You, I'll have this canvas pegged up to my wall, and it's just a big white or multicolored because I poured the paint all over the canvas. And I've got this little sketchbook in my hand with these tiny little drawings that I made. And I look at this giant canvas, and I'm looking at this, and I'm like, okay, I've got to transfer this very small image of this person that I drew onto this very large canvas. And so I get a very large stick of charcoal I just start in the middle, sort of, and I get on the stool when I have to go up, and the other one goes down. And you just draw the whole image. It's just, I approach it the same way I, I approach the small piece of paper, because if I didn't, I'd never be able to do it. Yes? What about the uh, cost of bubbles, where you would normally have verbiage? Ah, excellent question. Uh, <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna keep this short because okay. <laughs> I don't need to go all the way back into my childhood on this one. Uh, just suffice it to say, I have a I have a history in owning, reading, and loving comic books and things of that nature. Okay, and perhaps 
from that history than the other things. The, the focus on communication is the big thing for me in art. I, I want to communicate with my audience. I want them to, to hear what I have to say. If, if they don't get the whole thing or they get something different, that's okay, but I want to at least have that conversation. Um, a piece of art basically is long-term communication. I, as an artist, paint something and put it up there and then you see it. You and I may never meet and then later down the road you do something and someone else sees that and then later down the road they do something and someone else sees that and so forth and so on. And by the time this person's done something, I'm dead and I'll never see it. But someone else will see it. It's this continuing uh, exchange culturally within society that we're all a part of. And so in these paintings with the, the sort of the little word bubble, that's sort of what that harkens back to. Is, is What I'm saying here is that in these pieces, this is a form of communication. It's not that, like... Like this piece, for example, here next to me, it doesn't have a word bubble. You can look at this piece and you can gather information from it and you can have a conversation with this piece. And that's fine. But the word bubble itself kind of is a symbol for that. That's, that, that concept of art as communication, the idea that I'm telling you something, but they're not filled in because, again, I don't want to tell you what to think. I don't want to tell you that the world is round or not. What I want to tell you is, hey, I have an idea about the world, and here it is. And why don't you figure out what I'm saying, and then you do something and you tell somebody else. And that's so, so, hope that explains that. <laughs> that's short enough. Any other questions? All right, well, please enjoy the rest of the evening. Visit with Kevin yep. and um, enjoy. <laughs> <laughs>